Hey, congratulations, you got yourself a listing appointment, but now what do you do? Well, today in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact steps that it takes to put together a great listing presentation. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification to be notified every time I put out a great piece of real estate content on how to grow and scale your real estate business. My name's Ryan Harper and I help real estate agents grow and scale their business. So let's go ahead and dive right in and put together one of these amazing listing presentation books. Okay, every great listing presentation has got to have at least these five things in it, right? All right, so we need the property description. So that's where we start. We start with either the public records or an old listing on the MLS, and we print that out and we put that as page one in our binder. Great. Next thing we do is we do our listing presentation. So I have a, a free report or a PDF that I use and I stick that in there. And I'm part of the National Association of Expert Advisors where we can help sell your home for up to 18% more in traditional real estate methods. So it's a great free report and a listing presentation that we use for that. So that's number two that goes in there. Next thing we do is market stats. So you go ahead and you put together your market stats. Uh, I like to use you know national, county, city, and then subdivision. So we can make sure that we show the sellers that we're an expert in all those fields and what's going on in the market and how that's impacting their neighborhood and what's how come that's important. I'll go ahead and show you that on how we generate all those different stats. Next thing we do is the seller net sheet. So I'm gonna teach you how to put together a seller net sheet so the seller can know exactly how much money they're walking away with and how to present that to them. And then of course, last thing that we have in there is the recent comps and solds uh, and actives and some of the competition stuff that we put inside of the little binder for them so they can have a look at that. Now I'll use my computer and show them different pictures and compare them, it just depends on the seller and how in depth we wanna to go to that. Of course, uh, inside the first cover in the flap, I also put you know my bio, my description, some testimonials, all those kind of things. Those also go in there. So we'll show you how to put together this great listing presentation book. And before you know it, you'll be able to walk into any listing presentation with one of these with confidence. Okay, so to do the cover page on our little binder, I just use Word. You know, super simple. I type out the little seller partnership campaign here. I put in the husband and wife's name, their address, and then I get a picture of their house, either from Google Maps or I do a quick drive by and take a little snapshot of that on my phone so I can stick that in there. And our contact information, in case they have any questions, they can reach right out to us. What we have in there is our seller partnership program and what it takes to get your home sold. It takes marketing to sell a house. Hey, that's right. Who would have thought? Okay, so now here's all the comparison chart that what we do compared to what other agents do in the area. And then we put that on the first page. And then we have our seller partnership program where we can sell their home for up to 18% more than traditional real estate methods through the National Association Expert Advisors. So here's the things that they need to know in order to sell their home for the most amount of money. So this is also part of our listing presentation that we go into in great detail. Uh, in another video, we'll do that. So okay now for the meat and potatoes here's where i like to go over the different uh, parts of the appreciation and what's going on in the market uh, for the different parts of the county and the city that we're going to do so here's our boulder appreciation graph that i like to use from focus first uh, and there's a couple of different versions here so this one goes all the way back to 1979 so i use that one first and then sometimes i'll stick this one in there or i'll just throw this one away depends on when they buy their house uh, but what a lot of times I do is like if they bought it in 2014, I'd come right here and I'd write in the purchase price that they did and I'd hand write out kind of, you know, the appreciation based on 13.4, now 13.10.2. Now so I do appreciation jumps every year for them so that they can see where it is. And this is just one method of finding out and how to determine what the actual sales price can be. Right, so I like to tell them we use three different methods to compare those two, and then we compare it to the different threats and competition that are out there so that we can determine the correct pricing for their home and the pricing strategy. Because the pricing strategy is a huge part of marketing, and marketing is what it takes to get your home sold. Then, of course, I go over and I get some stats from my local realtor association, you know, so I can say, hey, here's the new listings, here's the sold listings, all the different things that are coming up on the market, whether it's up, down, less, more, all that kind of fun stuff and year to date. And so, hey, yeah, property prices still are increasing. Yes, we are having home prices come down, but guess what? It's because prices are still over listed. So next, after we take over and talk about the county, we go down into the city that they're in. I just use Longmont for an example, uh, you know, and then we can go over the different things like that. How many new listings, sold listings, medium price, 
purchase price, you know, all those kind of fun stats that we go over. I explain to them what's happening in the market, that we are getting a lot of price reductions, but home values in general, average and median home values are still going up. Now, that doesn't mean sellers aren't pricing their homes too high and having to come down. So we like to use, like I said, pricing as a strategy and a marketing piece. So we'll go over the most important things to do and the threats and competition for them to take a look at. Okay, next step we do is we go ahead and we get the neighborhood information from our MLS. Uh, we download that. I'm here in Colorado, and so focus first, I have it loaded up to where I need to get the 71 fields, so all 71 fields from my MLS. So I go ahead and I click here, get down start, downloads, and we find our 71 field text export right there. Open that up. Now, voila, here's the South Point in Lafayette. So that was the last one I did. So there's that area. We're just going to use that. And okay, so now Focus First has created these amazing graphs for us, uh, and they put it all on a quick little summary page for us. And so this is how you make yourself sound like an expert. You know, average days on market, 39 days for the last 12 months. Average sale price was 965. Odds of selling your home are about 89%. So there's two for sale right now, but 17 have closed. Uh, here's when they sell. So here's the time of day, year when they sell. Uh, you know, so far we've had, you know, great 2021 over into 2022. Boo, 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 boo. Uh, now, this is what I like right here is the pricing gram and scattergram. So basically, you can come over to them and say, hey, you have a total square foot home of 3,500 square feet. What do you think we should price it at? You know, and so you can kind of just point right there. Now they can say, oh, 980 or 830, depending on what it looks like. How many bedrooms does this have? Was it a finished basement? All those kind of things. So you can kind of use that as a comparison. But, you know, hopefully they're not going to come up here and say, oh, two million dollars or whatever, because you're like, oh, well, here it is. So there's those graphs and charts. Uh, so I like to print this one out, use that as a cover state cover sheet again. Then of course I come over here to my patterns and I print out all these as well. So these are just individual ones and it breaks down the summary, you know, over the last 12 months, summary of 2022, summary of 21. Uh, and then time to sell, average days on market, how long it takes to get them closed. I like to show them this and break it down that, you know, most homes closed here, some home closed here, some home closed here uh, in 2021. Then I say, oh, look what happened in 2022. It shortened. Look what happened here. Here's when homes have sold. So when's the best time to sell a house? You know, usually it's this springtime, but not last year. So when's the best time to sell a house? Well, look, we've had a whole bunch, but now we're coming into that uh, busy time. So we haven't had as many listings come out in the market. So we show them that. Uh, pricing, then I print out this. So this really helps. This is all the homes that have sold in that neighborhood in the last two years. And so you can take a look. Here's black is good. Red is bad, right? Zero. So they can kind of get a feel on what homes are going under or over asking price. Then they can get that. So I print those out. Uh, and then, of course, we print out that scattergram and all those kind of fun things. So those are the MLS data that we use and present to the people. People want to know is, hey, how much money am I going to walk away with? What's my bottom line, right? How much is it going to cost me? So that's why we do an estimated seller net sheet. Now, I just do mine from my title company. They have a little thing right here in rate quotes where you can click on it and go seller's estimated net sheet, right? So there it is. We just go ahead and do one, puts in the sale price, you know, how much they're going to have to pay in taxes uh, versus all these other fees, you know, to the closing service fee, the water escrow fee, you know, how much they got to pay off their loan, uh, the different county taxes and all that kind of fun stuff here's the agent commissions we put those in there just so they can see that but what we do is we come down here and we just circle this bottom number right here this 442 and say hey how does that work for you is that something that you're thinking about uh, about how much you're going to walk away with when you sell your home and they either say yes or no and so then you can adjust the price here or the price there so it just really helps with negotiations Okay, so the next thing I do is I print out some of the comps and the solds that are, were on that graph. So I can say, here's where this house was listed for, here's what it was sold for to them, just so they can kind of see that the difference that, you know, the market's not really supporting the multiple offers in this price range anymore, unless the homes have been really updated and maintained and look amazing. So those are kind of the things that we help you know, educate our sellers on so that they can make the right decisions when it comes to pricing and marketing their home. So this is a, you know, real simple, easy. Now I don't show all the pictures and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I usually just have this in here for last resorts 
just so we can talk about that. Most people, they totally agree with the pricing on the line graph and just say, yep, that's exactly what I was thinking about, or nope, that's not what I was thinking about. And so then we can get into that discussion and try to adjust those prices there and expectations, so especially in this market. All right, I hope you liked that video and what to include inside of a listing presentation and a leave behind book. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Make sure I answer all my comments and questions. So feel free to reach out to that. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications. That way you can get updates on all the great real estate content that I'm putting out on how to do lead generation and close more deals. Thanks and see you on the next video.